This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on screen shout outs, access to members only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to take a look at the four things that crossed my desk in the last 24 hours that I felt to be newsworthy. Again, Happy New Year to everybody out there. Uh, thank you for everybody that recently subscribed. Uh, the subscribers have went up in the past two to three weeks. I appreciate everybody that have recently joined the channel. And I'm going to do my best in 2024 to give you the best content I possibly can. So let's get into today's basically Ravens Daily for January 4th, 2024. First thing up, um, Lamar Jackson is not playing Saturday. If we go back a couple weeks, and I'll be the first to admit it, I really didn't want the bye week initially. I felt like we needed to continue to play, to continue to keep the momentum that we have, and roll on into the playoffs doing that. Now, as week 16, 15, 16, and more so week 17 got here, that sentiment turned to me wanting the bye week because I feel like we need that rest for some key guys to get as healthy as possible and securing the number one seed in week 17 having a chance to rest those guys in week 18 having the bye week the first week of the playoffs that's going to do wonders for guys like Ronnie Stanley Morgan Moses Marlon Humphreys, Kyle Hamilton, two and a, like um, Kyle will probably be a month before he would play the game, so he should be. I don't know what the how the extent of the injury, but he should be pretty as healthy as he can at this time of the year, and most of the team should be because most of those guys are going to go three weeks without playing. Uh, I didn't like the initial rotation of tackles at first, but it turned out to be a good thing. Um, I like the comments from Ronnie and from um, Morgan that they they just feel fresher when it comes to the fourth quarter. They feel stronger. Their body don't feel as weak when the fourth quarter comes and they feel like they can finish the game out. And that's going to be a key in the playoff times. These three weeks plus, I don't, I don't know if we're rotating the playoffs. Maybe not. Maybe depending on the game, but we'll see. We'll see. So I think that was a good idea to – do that, and I think it's a really good idea to not to sit Lamar because he's the one person that we can't afford to lose. The one person that we can't afford to lose. Now, with that being said, moving to my second point, the depth of our team. I want to talk about the depth of our team, and I saw a couple people on Twitter mentioning, and in some of my emails, mentioning the depth of our team. And I'm going to tell you why I think we're, we don't have stars in these spots, but we got really good players here, and that way when some guy goes out or some guy goes down or somebody needs a break, we can bring the next guy in, and the drop-off ain't super-duper significant. It's significant, but it ain't super-duper significant. Our team is full of depth at running back position. Excuse me. And I say that because the, when the season started, it was J.K., it was Gus, it was... I think Melvin Gordon, maybe. I think. Because Keaton was on IR or whatever to start the season. All right. J.K. goes down week one. Then we go to oh, Justice Hill. That's what it was. It, was, it wasn't Melvin Gordon. It was Justice Hill. It was Justice Hill. J.K. goes down first week. So now you're looking at Gus, Justice. You bring Melvin Gordon in. Then we have situations where Justice Hill is hurt. And we had to bring in... A, I think we brought in Drake for a week, maybe. Uh, then shortly thereafter, Keaton came back. And then Keaton did his thing and for the weeks he was here, and then he got hurt. And then the, look at the game that Justice Hill had Sunday, over 200 yards, you know, totally. Uh, then Melvin Gordon came in and powered in for a touchdown. 
So you got a savvy veteran as the third back. Depth at running back has was pretty good for us this year. Losing two guys to season in the injuries. And the two guys being J.K. and uh, Keith Mitchell. So depth at the running back was good for us. Also depth at the offensive line. Which I just mentioned a minute ago about how we were rotating guys out. And you think about it. Think about it. We got Ronnie on the left. Moses on the right. And so they were rotating Makari and Falele. Now y'all know I, Falele, I didn't mention his name as much Sunday. Or at all Sunday because he played better. So I'm not finna crap on Falele. He, he's gotten better as he's been out there. Uh, but you look at the three backups that we run out there. You look at Makari on the left side, Falele on the right side. And I think Ben Cleveland, who got a chance to play Sunday, could play either left or right guard in the absence of Makari or John Simpson. So we got three backup O-linemen that are capable of coming in the game and playing at a high enough level to help us get victories. So that's depth there. Now flip to the other side of the ball, the defensive line. And I mean the, from across the front all the way. You don't get a lot of drop off there, I mean, except for when you put maybe Robinson in there. He's gotten better. But you think about those guys across the front. Owe, Van Oye, Clowney. Um, who else is our other edge guy? Mm, Owe, Van Oye, Clowney. I can't think of who else is on the, on the edge for us. But then you look at Matt BK, you look at Travis Jones, you look at Washington, you look at Urban. That's eight guys that there ain't no real drop-off when you take one of them out, other than Matt BK. And he's looking at, what, 13 sacks? So you give him a break and bring in Urban or, or, or Travis Jones or Broderick Washington. I mean, yes, they ain't as, as good as Matt BK, but they don't suck either. So that's great depth up front, and then you can run them guys in and keep them fresh. You ain't got to, like when Calais was here, Calais played too many damn snaps. Too many. Because we didn't have depth. We got it now, though, and it's been paying off because those guys, if you go back and look at the the um, play number sheet like that, that comes out like the next day or whatever, a lot of times Jeff treat, tweet, tweets it, but you can go get it from damn near anywhere. Um, a lot of those guys don't play more than 60 to 70% of the snaps. And if they get that high, it's rare. It's rare. And so keeping them fresh and you don't have that drop off is, is a great thing. And that's part of one of the reasons why our defense is good, too. Not the only reason, but that's part of the reason. And also, the depth at a position that I thought that I was terrified of, defensive back. Obviously, if you just think about the starters, you think about Marlowe, you think about Marcus Williams, you think about Kyle Hamilton, and whoever else, and I'm thinking preseason, whoever else was going to start at that other corner. I was terrified at who was going to start at that other corner. Brandon Stevens, I owe you an apology. You have turned out to be the best corner on our team this year. And that's no shade at Marlowe. I just think Brandon is the best corner on our team this year. Now, when Marlowe went down, Darby jumped in and played. Um, Marlette jumped in and played. Rocky Sin played. He didn't play well. Now, he, he was a drop-off. Rocky Sin was the apparent drop-off. But them other two played well. Look at what Geno's done. And we're going to talk about Geno a little bit later in, in, in this video. But look at what Geno's done. We have tremendous depth on this team at four significant positions. Now, I don't know what, what kind of depth we have at linebacker, so we ain't had to use them. Roquan and PQ done pretty much played the entire time. Quarterback, Lamar done played. We good there, but Snoop made the Pro Bowl last year, so Snoop ain't Lamar. I'm not saying that, but just talking about the depth pieces. And that wide receiver. Like, we don't have this top-tier C.D. Lamb, Tyreek Hill guy at wide receiver, but we got four or five guys that can play play good football and contribute. And the, the one I say for last on purpose, tight end. Before the season started, I said we had the best tight end room when I did my, my preseason rankings and whatnot. And I'm still standing on that that Mark went out and we have not lost production at the tight end position. Some would say we've even gotten better, but I'm not here to debate that today. But still, we got depth all around the team and you really got to shout out to Costa for, for doing that. It didn't look pretty at first, 
But you got to shout him out for roster building. And I know sometimes we bash him. I, I'm, I've been guilty of bashing him sometimes, but you got to shout him out, man. He did his fucking job and did it to a high level. So salute to you, DaCosta, for building a damn good football team. All right, next up, the Pro Bowl. We had seven guys make the Pro Bowl. Um, Lamar Jackson obviously made it. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum made his first Pro Bowl. Matt BK made the Pro Bowl. Patrick Queen made the Pro Bowl, which I know that's my dude. And that the little video they showed when he made it, and they called him in. DaCosta called him in the office and told him he got got kind of emotional. I feel I feel him. I feel him. And I don't feel him as much as he feel it because I'm not him. But I know how much hate I got for being a fan of his when he wasn't playing good. And I, I know all the, the vitriol and all the, the, the I'm stupids and you don't know what you're talking about. When I was taking up for the man and defending him, just saying, give him time, let him learn the game and whatnot. And so I know he got... If what I got was one percent, he got a thousand percent. So I felt that emotion when I saw that 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 clip on Wired yesterday. So salute to PQ for that. I'm, I'm proud of him, and you no know, hats off. Then you playing next to the best linebacker in the game, Roquan. And and he, and saying that there's no shade at PQ because PQ is probably top five linebackers, maybe, maybe. Fred, Fred Roquan. Maybe Milano, maybe Greenlaw, PQ right there. Yeah, PQ maybe three or four. Maybe. But, Ken, uh, Kyle Hamilton made it. Uh, I knew Kyle. Kyle's probably going to be fucking all pro safety. Probably. He'll probably going to be the all pro safety. He, Kyle has had an amazing year. And obviously the GOAT, Justin Tucker, made it also. Now, I'm going to close this out with my Pro Bowl snub. Now, well, it's not my Pro Bowl snub. I've been seeing stuff going on Twitter saying that this was a Pro Bowl snub. I personally don't think so. Geno Stone. Now, Geno has had an incredible year. I think he had seven interceptions. Had a run where he had about five in a matter of like four or five weeks. Great run. But he still is a backup. He's Marcus's backup. For a reason. I'm not saying Geno sucks. Not saying that. Love what Geno's doing. I love the fact that we can bring him in, drop Kyle down, and still run all three of them safeties and, and not not skip a beat. But I don't think he was snubbed. I just don't. But that's my two cents. Tell me what you guys think in the comments about all those topics covered today, especially the the if Geno was snubbed or not. And um, I just want to say thank you again, man. It's a new year. I'm extremely appreciative of all the love that you guys have been showing. I hope to pay that forward and give you a great channel in 2024. And um, again, let's grow this thing. Let's let's get to 10K, man. Let's push this thing out. Let's hit the like button. Let's subscribe. Let's share. Let's push this thing to 10K and, and, and see where it goes from there, man. But thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys soon. Today is January 4th. It's 2:26, and um. I'm out. Peace.